Okay, so I have a competitor that's going to be fighting this weekend in Tullamore. It's going to be close to their own gym as well. So I've got Conan with me. Uh, he trains under Kieran Davran out, um, out of Air Grapple, formerly SBG, SBG Tullamore. Kieran Davran, Davran for me is one of one of the best coaches, whether it be technically or on a personal level as well. Uh, one of the best grapplers within the country. And this is one of the many kind of talents coming out. It's the second fight. I want to thank you so much for joining me. I know obviously it's fight week. There's a lot going on. How are you? And and what are your feelings come fight week? What are my feelings come fight week? Well, first of all, thanks for having me on. But fight week, I don't think, uh, it doesn't really reflect in my record, my record being one and one at this stage, that uh, this has actually become quite a regular process for me. I think what we've done really well out of Air Grapple and that I see a lot of other gyms starting to get into a lot more now is doing their and novice comps so there's the likes of the national mma league and then that was the big one especially the one that i started with uh and there's millions of other ones i believe uh honey badger mma still runs one every now and again and there's many other ones going around the country just all these little novice comps that people hop in and out of i've had i want to say 12 or 13 novice f- fights at this point before i even went amateur so uh the nerves that a lot of people might talk about going into fight week just it's, it's just not really something that phases me much anymore at the risk of sounding arrogant it's just it's just another week it's just another week for me i now i uh, do take very long hard gazes at the fridge and all the nice stuff in there and uh, have to settle for my rice and chicken but uh, but other than that it's uh, it's just another week at the office. It's a small price to pay to do what it is that I love doing. And sorry, there's another part to that question. Uh, air, no, no, sorry. <laughs> no, I, I think so. But I actually like how you explained that because the how you look at it, Kieran will probably tell you I I've had a sit down interview with Kieran and and we went back into the days when he started. There was none. It was straight into professional. You, no mm-hmm. one really knew what they were doing. So you can see, obviously. The advancement and and the national MMA leagues is is fantastic and you have shows like uh, Virtus up north which you fought on as well I believe mm. um, yes yes chaos a lot of them are doing a lot because there is so many novices around what was it like such... for you doing your first novice like so what was your first ever kind of fight like like talk us about the nerves on that <laughs> day and and we'll bring oh, you back in time oh that is chronic uh my first novice fight that was. Oh God, what age was I? I think 19 or 8, sorry, 19 or 20 at that stage. Uh, uh, I had a bit of a weird thing in the gym, like, uh, whereas I actually started off at the gym as a really scrawny, skinny lad, but just for whatever, through all these circumstances, I was doing the leave insert and everything at the time, really overeating. It was weird. As I got into the gym, weirdly enough, even though I was doing all the gym work, I was getting astronomically fat and so i i got uh up to i think i was up to about 100 kgs at a at a point and then uh, uh which for me is quite large you know different frames and all that but for me it's enormous and i just remember seeing ronan and there was jamal at the time jordan scully as well they were doing this uh gamma thing and i was like i fancy a go at that and then uh i think i got down to 92 and i'd only really done kickboxing at the time and of something possessed me because I saw everyone else doing it to shoot a double leg and uh, yeah I threw I threw I think two punches see Ronan and uh, Ronan Deegan if he even remembers this but I remember shooting that double leg and just getting my the world's worst double leg mind you I didn't know how to shoot a double leg but I just I just felt like something I was supposed to have done shot that double leg Got my neck wrapped up, and I think in a minute or so afterwards, I was asleep with a referee over over the top of me. And I think it's got it's uh, been a long, bumpy road since then. A lot of ups, lots of downs, mostly ups. It has to be said, but yeah, just getting my weight down, learning, you know, getting an increase in fight IQ, all that sort of stuff. And oh, that's a weird memory to think back on now. Just uh, the worlds apart that that's. Uh, been just uh, that little show it was run by it was run by honey badger i don't think they were honey badger at that stage i don't think they'd become that yet but uh yeah it was being run by those guys it was a very good show especially for what it was and uh yeah no it's uh long away and i definitely think doing those novice fights 
is the best way to go. I know a lot of people get two or three or four, but myself and a lot of the other guys in the gym, Jay McCourtney and uh, Joe O'Leary, uh, Shane Dunn as well, we did loads of those fights, I think. Yeah, I had 12 or 13. I think a lot of the other lads had a similar number as well. I've And I know a few lads have done, you know, around the 20 mark. And I think that's definitely the way to go if you're looking to do this MMA shtick as a, as a career, as a long-term thing. Yeah, because because you see the the like if you look back at fighters, te even ten years ago, the skill levels of the guys like yourself at, at these ages coming through the novice competitions are like you said astronomically bigger. Like the the skill levels are bigger. Everyone's more well rounded. It's MMA classes now, not striking, grappling, mm. and so it's it's MMA. Everything's kind of merged into one. I know obviously you do have the separate kind of striking and stuff, but there's a lot more MMA classes now, and yeah the only thing that gets you more better and like provides you with a good platform is experience. And like that with those competitions, you've kind of set yourself up right going into amateur. Like you said, you've had so many before when you look at, cause they're not actually recorded. So when I go look for the stuff like that, I can't see novice. That's, it, yeah. um, that's an idea for someone, not me. Cause I don't have the time to be doing that, but it <laughs> would be nice to be able to see the novice competitions um, and, and the records in it. But, um, what made you actually bring you back even before that mad story that you told me? What brought you into MMA? What made you kind of join MMA? What was it about? So, yeah, what actually got me into MMA? That, yeah, again, there's that's a very multifaceted answer, I think. And I think if you ask me again tomorrow, I might even give you a slightly different answer. But what's coming off the top of my head now was uh, uh, I was a very, I what was it? I had a very, like, high... Uh, I had, a pro I had a lot of problems in school, basically, not necessarily like bullying or anything. I was fairly lucky in that regard, but I was just, I was never good at just sitting down, getting stuff done and just keeping my head focused on anything for any given amount of time. And my mother, bless her, would take me to all these different places trying to figure out, you know, ways to help me out. And I just uh, remember one, I don't know if doctor's the right word or therapist maybe, but I remember being being brought up that I had a very high uh, uh, very high uh, st uh, stimulus threshold for like uh, you know uh, adrenaline and, and stuff like this just uh, it just stuff that it made me it made it very hard for me to just keep focused on any one given thing because it it just didn't get the adrenaline going didn't get any stimuli going and I just burn out fall flat on whatever it was I doing and I remember it, they suggested something it, they suggested that I do something high adrenaline, and I think they probably thought more along the lines of, you know, rugby or rock climbing or motocross, something like that. I don't know. And uh, uh, I think I had just by pure coincidence on the day uh, looked, saw like a, you know, top 100 MMA knockouts March 2020, uh, sorry, 2016 or something like that. And to my mother's horror, that was uh, what I discovered first. I looked up uh, uh, MMA gyms awfully. A look and found uh yeah what was at the time SBG Tullamore wandered it and wandered in there took a kickboxing class and now here we are like that um I think everyone's mothers and stuff when uh, they want to go to to <laughs> MMA because I think it's still it's still viewed in a bad light by people I don't think people see mm. and this is why I want to talk to people like yourself uh, and other people that have come up through it because most people I've met from it are, are probably the nicest people. 99%, you're always going to have 1% of people that are dickheads. But that's in every walk of life, not just MMA, mm -hmm. it's boxing. But, well, if you want to go GA, it's probably about 50-50 if I want to be completely <laughs> honest. And yeah, I hope no, let's not kid ourselves. That, uh, we, let's not we, kid they, ourselves. We know what they, know <laughs> they, they, know they, <laughs> they are what they are. But, like... <laughs> um. You, I get to see, and I get to see what you go to. Well, I don't get to see, but I know what you go to on a daily basis. And and what I can do actually then to lead over to your personal life. Do you find that with the likes of the discipline, the structure and stuff, that that helped lead into your normal life? Or did it have no effect? Were you always kind of quite structured? Or or did it have any effect on your personal life? This was just your new thing you were going to do. Uh, stru yeah, structure. I would say... Uh... I would say the gym is probably what I structure everything around again. Uh, again, before f finding the gym, it was all, you know, I was very all over the place. Again, I, uh, it would be remiss of me to claim that I had, you know, huge struggles. I've had 
I've been very lucky to have a very nice upbringing and uh, all that sort of stuff. I've had a good home life, all this sort of stuff. I can't try to pull that card in anyone. But like any other teenager, I think I found, uh, yeah, I found those uh, mid to late teenage years incredibly difficult. And I would, I'll, I'll be bouncing from, you know, one thing to the other. I was drinking quite a fair amount as well. I just... found it really hard to be committed to anything to enjoy anything all that much and i was never big on uh, big on school wasn't good at it didn't particularly like it either and the gym just gave me something that i could structure my life around and i did find that once i you know once i got my hour a day in the gym say you know going into at the time especially andrew barrett's kickboxing class i would you know even just knowing that i would have that in the evening Now, it might have been a little late, a bit little, too little, too late, but it did, I did find it helped me structure everything else in my life. You know, I knew, okay, look, I'll be going into kickboxing six to seven, I can do whatever I want, then just knuckle down for an hour or two here. You'll be fine. You'll get to blow off all the steam afterwards and you'll be good. No, and that's good. See, like, it just shows that when you had something that you wanted, which was MMA, and that was your thing, you then kind of, like you said, you knuckle down, you kind of structure things to, to go towards that. But it's not just you. And, and like you said, a lot of people do grow up like myself. I never had a bad childhood or stuff, but I found myself, I think, at that age, in the, the late teens, it's, you, you, it's, it's very hard for young men, and especially with, obviously, you've hormones, you've got school, which I think is there's a lot of pressure on You go into you think about it, you go into school from first year, they want you to pick the subjects that's going to define the rest of your life. And Yes, sir. which is mental. Like, I still don't know what I want to do. I'm 38, nearly. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, um, I think it is time. But the fact that you found that and and like that you said, Andrew Barr's class, that's what, what kept you going. And it just shows that MMA is good for people and what it does for people. But when you first walked into the gym, because like we just said, people don't. look MMA in a, in a good light a lot of people wouldn't or or you think or mine myself would think going in this is going to be a, a, a fucking club full of killers it's going to be big lads it's going to be this and then you get in there they're the nicest people ever what was your kind of what were you expecting going in and what was actually the expectation of when you got there or was there a difference did you know the atmosphere would be like what it was when you got there Yeah, no, I uh, I remember, yeah, like I said, I, you know, uh, after that sort of meeting with this therapist, doctor, whatever you want to call her, I looked up, you know, MMA gyms, Tullamore, and I looked through a few different places, but SPG Tullamore, as it was then, now Air Grapple, was the one that stood out to me. Now it had a very friendly, family, uh, family, uh, what's a family friendly looking website, but I've uh, learned, like anyone else, not to pay attention to that uh, sort of thing. So I, I did walk up expecting something out of, uh, you know, oh, what's the movie? Uh, Never Back Down and all that sort of stuff. That's exactly what I was expecting. And it didn't help that I think uh, Kieran O'Donnell was teaching a class at the time and absolutely tearing Slayer and Metallica in the background as I came in the door. But I just, uh, yeah, no, I went through those doors anyway. I went up to the reception thing. It was uh, Sharon Davern at the door at the time, told me what I needed to do. And I just remember thinking like an hour or so into the class and just as I was finishing up, I was just wondering how on, how in the hell I ever thought that the class would ever be like anything. I thought I remember I went with uh, my first ever training partner. It was, I remember it was uh, Autumn Kelly. He's a, uh, he's a lad out of our gym and I uh, hope you'll forgive me saying possibly the most unassuming individual I've ever met. And I just remember He hadn't been there long either, but he handed my ass to me. And I just remember thinking, yeah, nah, if uh, I need this in my life, if uh, if these uh, if these little lads like this can absolutely maul me, I don't even need to worry about the big guys. It's the little guys I need to be terrified of. And it's definitely something I need in my life. <laughs> And, and you bring up a good point there as well, because I think every, whether it be male or female, needs some sort of, of you don't need to go compete, but I think you need some sort of a, a combat experience or, or some sort of self-defense. Because like you said, these small guys, these small guys can wrap you up. And we've seen it. We've seen it up north in chaos. Uh, Andy Chapman ran a thing. It was like Emmanuel Prospect MMA went against Leon Davis, who's 16 years old. I think there was 30 kilos in the difference. Emmanuel knew basic jiu-jitsu. Leon is quite high up. But Lee, Leon subbed him a couple of times 
in a five minute period, nine times I want to say in five minutes. It just goes to show it's not all about strength. If you know how to manipulate people's bodies and and stuff like that, you could you could do it. But um, yeah, you went out from there. You've done all the novice. You've done the amateur, and that brings us to obviously you're one and one. You're going into your third fight. You're going on in this weekend. And what I like to see is more shows in in the Republic. And I I don't want I'm not trying to put divide into north and south. But the, the likes of you, the likes of people from Galway, place uh, Cork, you have to travel quite far to the likes of these shows mm. in Belfast, uh, Derry, stuff like that. How good is it to have one literally on your doorstep? You have no idea. I I I'm a man of many virtues, but patience isn't one of them. I don't like sitting around, be it on a plane, on a car, you know, outside a doctor's office. I hate sitting around waiting for things to happen. So. Yeah, having a show this close is just a dream come true to uh, for me. Um, yeah, as for like you know, lads and Galway's lads and Cork, God bless them, <laughs> going up to Newry and whatever. Like now, uh, there I now I'm no bureaucrat. I do know that there is a bit of a mess going on with uh, uh, the likes of Safe MMA and what have you. Just in terms of actually getting through paperwork insurance and all these sorts of things for fighting in the republic and even with all this travel involved i believe for a lot of people it's actually just easier to compete in the uk northern ireland included in that but with that said with that said once you get the paperwork out of the way yes 100 percent having this show so close and especially in a little town like tullamore it's a great little thing to have going on i think it is. It's fantastic. And it's in the, the Bridge House. I actually work as a bin man. I collect glass bottles. Right. And the Bridge House is one of the customers. We don't have them anymore. But that place is busy. It's big. It's a really nice hotel. Um, Unfortunately, I won't be there because it's my birthday weekend. And my birthday on Sunday, <laughs> yep. so I'm going to land a rotty. I told Kieran I was going and then yourself. I booked it. And then I had to ring him and say, I can't make it. We're after booking to go away. But... um. <laughs> Like, with it being so close, are you envisioning that you're going to be able to bring more of your friends and, and family? And you spoke about your mother being horrified you picking MMA. Has she gone to your shows? Can she watch the shows? And how has the her perspective of what you do changed? Or has it changed over time? Oh, my poor mother, man. Uh, she, she uh, her perspective has changed. I think she had the same vision that everyone has of MMA, which is, you know, the big lad who, you know, maybe is, you know, as thick as two stump, uh, t- thick as two short planks, uh, you know, as wide as he is tall, uh, dense as a brick, uh, covered in tattoos, bad tattoos, I should emphasize, uh, just absolutely clobbering the heads off each other. And she's met a lot of the people down at the gym. She's uh, met Kier. Kieran Davern, of course, and seen, she seemed to like him enough. She's uh, met Aunt Andrew. She's met uh, Ronan. She knows we're pretty decent, upstanding folk. What she refuses to do, though, she will not watch any of my fight. She's not watched any of them. She has. Uh, she's looked at all the promo stuff. She loves all that stuff. She she saves it all to her phone, bless her. And uh, but. Uh, now nah, I she hasn't watched any of my fights. I doubt she's gonna watch any of my fights. She won't be at this one, but uh, it'll be great to have some of the mates down there as well. You know, got a few of the lads coming in there. They'll get me a beer afterwards. That'll be fantastic. Brother will be there. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good all night altogether. Yeah, because like that, the traveling is a lot. To, like you said, you don't like even having to travel and then wait around for for these shows. So, and especially with the cost of living being so high even to, to get up there and back and, and the cost of tickets and, and the day out is quite a lot. So to have it this close and people will be able to go, like you said, you can just finish the fight. You can have a few drinks in wherever you choose. And then you can just go back home. It's not too far. It's not like you're up in Nori or you're up in Belfast, but uh, it's going to be a fantastic show. It's something I wish I was going to this weekend. Um, I'm going to let you go. I want to thank you so much for your time. And I want to say one thing, obviously your mother, obviously she changed her perspective, but the fact that she saves the promo stuff, I could I can understand the mother not wanting to watch the the sons fighting, but you like I said obviously her her opinion has changed and like her saving mm-hmm. stuff to the phone is just it just shows a, a change in in what she thinks about what you do and but like that if I could imagine no mother really wants to watch that so <laughs> fair play to her but I'm gonna let you go is there anything you want to say right. you go, or anyone you want to shout out and again thank you for your time best of skill this weekend yeah well. Yeah, well, frankly, I want to thank everyone. I want to thank, you know, my mother and father who've been 
who, yes, despite their initial reservations and possible continued reservations, have been incredibly helpful and supportive for me. My brother, I'd imagine he, he's living a relatively normal life, certainly in comparison to mine. I can imagine it's a bit of an odd thing bringing up what I uh, chose to do with my spare time and with my career. Uh, all my friends who, again, I don't expect them to understand what I'm doing, but they very much respect it, and I can only thank them a lot for that. Then, of course, the people that make do all the work with me. There's, you know, oh my god, uh, obviously, uh, main uh, sparring partners. We got Andrew Barrett, Jason McCourtney, Ronan Deegan, Shane Dunn, Shane Smith, uh, Joe O'Leary. So many guys, and then of course Kieran Davern up at the helm there, uh, just uh, keeping the ship on the straight and narrow. I. And I th think that's about everyone. Oh, also, I'd like to thank uh, Shane Dunn's mum for fixing my gloves. She's done that two or three times for me now. It, I'm a very sentimental man. I don't want to throw those gloves out. <laughs> no, those gloves sound like they're going to be with you forever. But oh, yeah. see, oh, they one will more be. question before you go. Kieran Davram, what does Kieran Davram mean mm -hmm. to you as a coach and as a mentor? Because Kieran Davram comes across to me, and I've had this conversation with him. He like He's probably one of the best technical coaches you can get. But as in a personable and on a human level, he seems to have that kind of empathy and sort of sort of he has that relationship with his fighters. What is Kieran, like what does Kieran Davern mean to you and the gym as a whole? Kieran Davern, yeah, and he is a very complex man. I have nothing but the most utmost respect for him. He's uh, anytime I've ever had a question for him, I uh, he always just has it just bang at the top of his head, and I have no idea how someone can retain that much information that quickly and that yeah recite it that quickly and what he's done you know with the business that is era grapple raising a family building a house like he's doing it's yeah no you can only you can only really admire it and i've always appreciated how he's helped you know me personally with my fights whenever i've lost and when i've uh how he's empathized with me and been real supportive whenever i've lost how he's uh, helped me keep myself within myself whenever I've won my fights, making sure that I know to be, you know, happy with myself, but not let it get all get to my head. Uh, and the thing is, as much as I know that any time I've ever asked him anything, he's had an answer for me just like that. But at the same time, I do know that if he didn't know, he wouldn't try to lead anyone on and try to give people answers that he doesn't have, which again, I can only respect and I'd imagine someone more adept than me might be able to uh, ask a more in ask more interesting questions for him, stuff that might get the gears working a little harder. But I just yeah, nothing but respect, and I yeah, I think I'll be working with him for as long as I'm doing this sport. I can't imagine being able to work this well with anyone else. Yeah, no, I, I, he's a fantastic person, and like you said, the knowledge that's just years of 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 what he's done and, and learning new things and, and trying to put them on the team. And like you said, he actually said it to me before. It's very rare that he doesn't know the answer. But if he didn't, he he would say, I don't know that right now, but I will find out for you, was what he said. 100%. He won't mm -hmm. come. He said, there's no point in trying to spoof people because then if you try to spoof people, they lose respect for you. They don't think you're speaking the truth the whole time. But no, he's a fantastic coach. It's a fantastic event this weekend. You've been a fantastic guest. I want to thank you so much. And best of luck this weekend. And I I won't see you then, but I will be talking to you after the show uh, just to see how everything went. All right. Yeah, no, thanks very much for having me. And yeah, we'll see you after. See you on the other end. Perfect. Thank you.